Hi, it's Fiona Hooper here again, and I'm back with another installment of my weekly show, The Poetry of Painting. Hope everyone's managing to cope okay with this heat wave here in England, or at least it is in the south of England at the moment. Um, it's been absolutely glorious weather, if maybe a little bit hot at times, but uh, uh, sadly some people have had it the other extreme with floods and things, so I think um, I consider myself very lucky that it's hot weather rather than anything like flooding so um, we have to be thankful for you know what we've got really don't we so anyway um, my thoughts go out to anybody who's suffered in flooding around the world at the moment and um, yeah so sorry to hear about that and read on, on um, in the newspapers all about that so anyway for um, for now this week I am really pleased to be able to welcome back to the show my lovely guest Marky Mark Simmons. So let me bring Marky in. I've done it again. Add you in. Sorry. Hiya. It's it's all too easy to click you out again. Sorry, <laughs> Mark. Um, so how are you? Are you? Are you managing to keep cool in this weather or is it a little uh, bit cooler up where well, you are? It, it varies. In the house, it's quite cool um, and, until night time when we go to bed and it's really hot upstairs. Um, so we're kind of leaving windows mm. and doors open upstairs to just get the air through before we go to bed. But yeah, it's been yeah. very hot um, yesterday and today. It's very sticky and very sweaty. Um, mm. So yeah, it, it's a wilted a bit. But isn't it always the way, you know, we, we moan that we don't get a hot summers. Now we're getting a hot summer, we moan. Um. <laughs> it's, it's sort of going to extremes though, isn't it? The weather, you know, I think, you know, climate yeah. change, which isn't supposed to exist according to wow. some people, but climate yeah. change, we're getting more extremes, we're getting stronger winds, we're getting heavier rain, we're getting hotter summers when it is yeah. hot, you know. Yeah. So I think we're just going to have to start getting used to it all, really. But um, well, I think we are. I think the world will will yeah. even itself out, and uh, you know, it, it, it has a habit of um, sorting itself. Um, uh, mm -hmm. But some really interesting stuff around climate change. I was listening to a thing um, on Radio Four, um, and they were talking to people from Iceland who obviously they're, they're on the edge of, of the arctic shelf and they, they've got a mm. lot of um arctic melt off and and that and they were saying that what they what they want to do with the water is to actually use transport it to countries that haven't got water right. um, to ease droughts and the only thing that's stopping them doing it at the moment is it's not environmentally friendly to do it because most boats mm. run on diesel and oil which isn't an environmentally friendly. So as soon as they can get an electric tanker or something like that, um, so then, tanker. that yeah, yeah, then that will be a possibility and they would be able to send thousands of tons of water around the world, which is um, something quite, I think, interesting to think about. I um, mean, mm. that, you know, we're already seeing that the, these things <clears throat> could happen. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And, I think in the meantime, if the rest of us can do every little bit that we can to help, you know, it all adds up, doesn't it? You know, sort of things with less packaging and not putting your vegetables in a plastic bag in the supermarket, things like that, you know. So yeah. I mean, try I mean, to I do think, all that sort of thing. Yeah, so do I. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I wrote a poem actually a while ago that's, that's in a global in an anthology called Globalization, um, and it's around. It's mm -hmm. called Plastic, um, and one of the things i point out in there is that although in years gone by we did burn a lot of fossil fuel we also had milk that was delivered in reusable bottles that were washed up and, yeah. and reused delivered on electric carts um, mm -hmm. we had the rag and bone man that came around who would collect old clothing and would sharpen your knives and that on a steel that was operated by foot um, mm -hmm. We used to take pot bottles back to the supermarket to be reused and you get 20p yeah. or whatever it was back on them. And you could actually go out to the ice cream van with a dish and he would fill the dish with ice cream. All yeah. oh, right. And I'll never so like that for one. your Sunday dinner and you could take it out and he, and he would he would put ice cream in it. Um, yeah. So when you look at some of those things that we did and we didn't have we didn't have so many plastic bags then and, and things like that. And uh, the things that we actually did, yes, mm. we weren't perfect because we were burning a lot of fossil fuel and, you know, diesel yes. and things like that. But actually, there was a lot of things that we did do 
you know, we, we patched up our clothing when we got holes in them. I mm. remember as a kid having all sorts of patches, deputy dog and all sorts on, on my clothing, where we yeah. where mum had patched them up as, and, and you mm. carried on wearing them. Um, you know, we weren't in such a throwaway world. And, no. and now we need to be going back to that, um, mm. you know. So, yeah, it, it's Absolutely. interesting times. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, by the way, we've got Chris saying, hello, Fiona, nice to be back watching you live. Hi, Chris. Great to have Hello, you on the board. And Rosie, hi, Chris and Fiona. I'm watching live, but Facebook won't allow comments, so I'm cheating and adding on to Chris's comment. Thanks so much, Rosie. However you right. do it, great. Thank you. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, Chris said he remembers taking a glass out to the ice cream van and getting ice cream put in it as yeah. well. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think we ever did that, but... I think we we sometimes get the block of ice cream, and it came wrapped in oh. like cardboard. So yeah, you know, you got it, popped it in the little freezer box in the top yeah. of the fridge, and you know. So again, well, cardboard, not plastic. And you could um, buy you could buy a little block that came mm. in like a paper, and you put it in yeah. a square corner, and that was divine. The ice that ice cream was <laughs> bright yeah. yellow. It was. Oh, it's it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Gosh, childhood memories. Hey. Oh well. gosh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh dear. Uh, eh, them were the days, said Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love. So anyway, I'm I'm absolutely honoured that you've written another poem about one of my paintings, which is called White Horses in the Bay. Um, it's an oil painting on canvas, 40 by 40 centimetres, excluding the frame, and it's actually just up here behind me. But I'll. I'll just pop it on the screen so that people can see it more easily. There we go. Um, so I just think, you know, each time we do, I do this show, I just think it's going to be so fascinating to hear how different your poem will be and how you've interpreted it um, compared with my version of it. So, uh, Marky Mark, would you like to read us your poem, please? Yeah, I've called mine Perishing Waves. Um, <laughs> And and I took a I took a, th a feeling from it of um, how life runs over us and and it kind of chips away to try and break us up and and part us and and wear us down and and that was kind of my thinking when I wrote this. <clears throat> Brown rocks emerge after every swell that rushes over and around, decaying all the surface, washing it to colour breaking down every minute mineral until all that is left is a dark, solid rock that refuses to move, to be shifted, standing strong, but decaying day by day from constant wear. Then, as the tide peels back and the nights fall, all that it hears is the whisper of those waves tormenting it, daring it to split, to crack into smaller pieces as it did once when headland. But the rock knows that if it cracks, it will surely perish and wash away with the sea. The rock instead stands mighty in the swell of the sea, hard and devoid of light, just staying in the fight day and night as the tide rushes in and out in spite trying to alter the seascape forever to be recovered at first light so that was my that was my poem and you can see oh. how i hopefully how i've kind of kind of weaved in the rocks around you know our lives how you know very often the the mm. things that wash over you during the day can decay you and break you and this mm. is this is very much about standing straight no matter what and and yes it will chip away at the surface but you you have to stay there for as long as you can mm. resisting the the process of attrition of daily life or in the, yeah, in the painting the, the waves so yeah. yeah and just as you say just keeping standing strong and maybe with people just remembering what's important and you know that we are in we are each important and not letting the others grind us down as they say so yeah, yeah. that's right and yeah. and I, th I got a sense with the two rocks that are, that are off of the main rock it mm. is about the waves coming over and them disappearing underneath the water and it, and it being a crescendo mm. over the top of them 
Um, so that that's where I wrote that poem from. Um, and mm -hmm. actually, at the time, I didn't know it was called White Horses. Ah. So that was interesting because had yeah. I have, I might have written it differently. Mm. So it, it's yeah. interesting that, you know, what we see and what we hear give us two different perspectives. Absolutely. And and if you'd known the title, I should say it could well have influenced what you would have written as opposed yes. to it just being a pure reaction to the painting. So yes. oh, that's fascinating because you've come at it quite a different angle to me. Um, obviously, I knew it was called White Horses in the Bay, and, and that influenced my poem. So um, I'll read mine, and then we can discuss the differences a bit more. So um, so my one is called White Horses in the Bay, not surprisingly. And here it is. So White Horses in the Bay. Where have they been? What have they seen? These racing white horses running their courses. With creamy white foam over the ocean they roam, across deep azure seas blown by the breeze. They run with the tide on a white knuckle ride. No master have they, no hand to obey. Watery hooves pounding, leaping and bounding, breaking against stacks, forging new tracks. Corralled in the bay, they tumble and play, stirring up sand as they advance on the land. It's been a long run under stars and the sun, but here on the beach is as far as they reach. So that's mine, which is obviously written from quite a different viewpoint of yours. Um, basically the, um, the point of view of the horses themselves mm. uh, racing across the ocean and eventually coming to a a gentle demise on the sand, I guess you could say. So yeah, I, lo I love that. I mean, I love I love the way it it actually it works very well with the picture because the picture's got a lot of depth in it, and and the horse and it mm -hmm. and it's great because the horses are kind of coming from way beyond in that depth right into you, um, mm -hmm. and I love the concept of those white horses galloping on you know along because they they do they like. They're like the fluid of a horse when you look at a wave top. It, yes. It's kind of like yeah. a horse jumping or a horse galloping. It, Absolutely. It, it just the crest of the neck. And yeah. 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 Well, Rosie says she she loves the expression, the tide peels back. That's from your poem. Right. Yes. Really? Yeah. And sometimes uh, the action of wearing us down can also shape us and make us better people. Yeah, Very true. that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. where the analogy of the rocks came in, it, it is the shape, you know, how, how the seed shapes those rocks mm -hmm. and decays them and dictates their shape. But also the peeling back was about taking layers away and taking away, almost in some ways, taking the old way and giving some new. Um, yes. But it's yes. still a, a, another layer down. It's still another bit nearer to the rock mm -hmm. cracking and, and that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Chris, Chris says it takes takes him back to his childhood watching white horses on the TV. Oh, All right. that's lovely. Lovely. So, um, one of yeah, my favourite things to do when I'm on holiday, if I ever get a mm. chance, is to go and sit when the tide's in and just watch waves crash up mm. rocks and, and see walls. Yes. And there's a place down in um, Ilfracombe in I think it's Devon, <clears throat> Cornwall, one or two. Um, mm. And you can go out on, there's like a round jetty that you can stand oh, okay. on and there's rocks yeah. on the side of it. And I can remember as a kid standing there for hours just watching these waves smash up the rocks and, mm. and feeling the spray. And it is such a, um, it's such a sense giving thing. And they, it kind mm. of erupts all your senses and that. And I could have just stood there mesmerized for hours on end. Yeah, I really yeah. It, it's also things like the colour in waves as well. You know, when you actually really start looking at them, you know, where they're starting to break over and you get that translucence and, you know, it depends whether it's just rocks there or sand, you know, whether it's got sand mixed in the water or it's just that wonderful translucent greeny sort of colour. You know, they're, they're fascinating, waves are. And um, they also 
the patterns of waves are what mm. is known as fractals as well. And it has been scientifically proven that fractals and looking at fractals, like leaf patterns in trees as well, mm -hmm. actually helps to reduce stress. So well, get out there, watch the waves, everybody. Well, also I can I can remember because I although I'm an Essex boy, I moved when I I moved when I was very very young up to Ashington in Northumberland, and one mm. of the things you get when the tide comes in now. I mean, we were, we weren't far from beaches like New Biggin um, and Whitley Bay, and one one of the things you get when the tide comes in now, you get the sea fret as well. So it, it's oh. like a very dense um, fog. Yes, that comes yeah. in, it comes in very fast, um, yeah. and it goes as fast as it came as well usually goes as, as mm. the tide goes out but yeah mm. um so you know the the whole influence of waves and and that just influences everything you know this yes. i remember what the school with this sea fret hanging around you know and, and yeah. It's, yeah 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 and the, the of course the gulf stream keeping our island much warmer than it would be and things like that you know and so, yeah absolutely oh, um, Rosie's put another comment. Um, she says, Fiona, I love the idea of each wave or horse being on a long journey rather than just moving in and out over the same ground. I like to think yeah. of them as having, you know, as I say, where have they been and what have they seen? You know, they've seen ships and, um, you know, sea life and dolphins maybe jumping, whales breaching, you know, and, yeah. and then the slapping their flukes on the water. Just yeah, I like I like to think of them as okay. They may just dip under the water, but they they're still there and they're going to come back again, you know, yeah. and keep keep on their journey. So, and I, I think that's one of the common things with the two poems. It is around distance and journey. So your mm. yours is yours is very much about them coming from far away and and on a never almost never ending journey. And mine's about yes, they're static, but there's this never ending wash and peel away of layers mm. and, and and you know washing away of you know trying to crack that rock all the time and again you yeah. know based on what they may have seen and 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 the the sounds that would would have been heard and and that you know yes. and i think that that's some real commonality with, within the sea as well mm. definitely yeah i mean the sea is so powerful you know one way and another it's just that you know it can change landscapes it can it can break down rocks and erode cliffs and you know it's such a powerful thing mm -hmm. but um you know it just and it and it's always moving isn't it you know it's never still the sea has always got currents and waves and um yeah it's a, a living thing really quite apart from everything that lives in it you know it's almost like it the body of water is alive almost isn't it so yeah yeah that's right and and yeah. it's it's almost the the thing of you have to survive in it and those rocks mm. have to be they, they form a function within the water you know mm. the the water forms a function in breaking those rocks down and the rocks form a function of being there and and it's almost like they don't want to let go of that function they because they they've got to be there because if they don't then the other mm. parts of the sea and that can't perform their functions yeah and their functions yeah. have to change um yeah. and, and they're still protecting me. some of the other rocks further inland as well yeah so. that's right so it, uh, you know it, when you when you start looking at that in compare in comparison with life the sea actually tells us an awful lot about life mm. yeah by the way anybody else that's watching that wants to put a comment please do ask questions make comments that'd be lovely you know, be involved. Be lovely to uh, to get your comments and your feedback. Um, yeah, so I think that I just I just love the two completely different aspects of those poems, um, Marky Mark. Really lovely. Thank you so much for writing that. And um, thank you for asking me. Yeah. To. So, so last time you were telling us about some plans for events that you've got oh, coming up, um, gosh, yeah. your radio show and things. Yeah, well, I, I've I've done two now um, live gigs, which is um, fantastic to be back performing live. Mm. Um, and coming up, I've got some big ones that are on your tongue tomorrow in Leicester. Um, and then um, August, I've got um, at Leamington, there is a, um, 
art picnic there, uh, art in the park, and we're doing some poet, some open air poetry there. So I shall travel up to Leamington, and then there's also um, the Kaya Festival, which is the end of August. Um, if you go on my on my um, Facebook page, there's more details on it on there. And oh, I'm performing after, this after the live, put your links on Facebook yeah. for me as well, yeah, we'll so, do. so that yeah. people can can find that as well. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do. Um, and so I'm doing a, um, a, a, a set there on the Saturday, um, but there's some great DJs and acts happening there. We've got Terry Hall, who used to be with specials of Fun Boy Free, is doing a DJ oh. set. And uh, Lee Scratch Perry, who anybody who's into uh, reggae and dub will know that Lee Scratch Perry is an absolute legend. Um, right. So he's going to be over there um as well, I think on the Sunday. Um, so it should be a really good do. And it's just on my doorstep as well, which helps. Um, mm. It's literally about 400 yards from where I live. Um, oh, so that that's wow. great. Um, so that, that'll that be great. And then the other big thing is, uh, and I'm hoping that I'll do the first recording tomorrow. I've been offered a, a slot on Hope Radio in Birmingham um, mm. as a result of me doing my poetry, some poetry on there and picking some tunes. Um, I've been offered a slot and we're going to be doing a, a, a show called Both Sides and on it what we will do it will be a little bit of chat from me at the beginning introducing cl a classic or iconic album um, and I'll give you a few facts about it and, and have a little do a little bit of chat only about five minutes and then we're going to play that album out in its entirety now that's that's quite an unusual thing to do um mm. and that should the first one hopefully will be sunday evening and again once we once we've got it all fully established i'll i'll drop the links and, and mm. that so people can listen and the mm -hmm. idea is around picking albums that often you you may only hear a couple of tracks from but you never hear that album in its entirety now the one mm -hmm. we've got for sunday is an absolute massive album um, that everybody has probably heard in its entirety, but it is so good it needs to be heard again um, and again and again. So we're going to open with that one. I'm not telling you what it is. You'll, you'll have to tune in Ooh. on Sunday to find <laughs> out. Um, and there, there will be a mixture of bands from across the world, um, and there'll be also some closer to home, like several Birmingham bands that will will feature um mm. their albums so it, it'll be a good mixture and you know we've got so i've got some ideas of some real legendary um albums and it'll just be nice for people to be able to kick back on a sunday evening listen to and think oh i'm the this rages or well i've never heard this album all the way through um no interruptions we might have a little sound effect when we when we turn the record over um but other than that and they'll be the originals as well so um, oh, wow. most of them won't be remastered they'll be the original playlists on them and, and that so yeah. so well, i'm really looking forward to it because it's something to get my teeth into and if though mm -hmm. we're gonna probably do six weeks and, and if that works well then you know i've got enough material probably to do the year um <laughs> you know so um i'm looking forward to Excellent. that and um, that yes. should be yeah. really really good um and yeah if people yeah. want to listen in and and give feedback and and you know that that yeah. would be absolutely great so what? so i'll be recording that hopefully tomorrow um, Good. and then it's just really putting sets together and and writing uh, i went through a spate where i had quite a lot of writer's block and i, I couldn't i just couldn't get my head around writing anything and mm. and keep and, and doing things like this really helps actually because it, it it's kind of kicked me back into the writing um good, so good. I'm, I'm starting to write and get ideas come back again um and starting to get some some very different ideas come which will be really nice so i'm exploring some of those yeah. in writing as well um excellent and that. so yeah good well i've got an event coming up um the first one is this Friday evening at five o'clock UK time, I'm going to be on Rose's show. So oh. Rose's turned the tables on me and I'm going to be writing a poem about one of her beautiful paintings. I'm not going to be singing that. it though. Rosie sings, I don't sing. 
I, right. You just need to be grateful that I am not going to sing it. I will be speaking, not singing. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be really good fun because Rose has been on my show twice now and, and that's been great. She's done beautiful songs about my paintings. So um, returning the compliment. Hopefully I'm returning the compliment anyway. Yeah. Um, so that's that's going to be really fun. We've started going back to Kingston. We've been back twice now. It's every other Saturday. Uh, Kingston and Pont Thames, that is, not Kingston, Jamaica. Um, <laughs> A bit, a bit more exotic but sadly not and um and that's going really well and it, it's just great to actually get out there talk to people and uh, you know talk about the art with them and just catch up with people that we we see there but you know they're not sort of close friends that we could phone or something but you know we see people there in and they normally stop for a quick chat so it's been lovely to catch up with people as well oh rosie yeah oh Rose is off to yoga. Thanks very much for tuning in, Rosie. And uh, I'll be speaking to you tomorrow anyway. So enjoy your yoga. Um, yeah, well, so I've, it's, it's been good. I've had sales both times so far, which is brilliant. Um, I've got quite a lot of new work that I've been taking, that I've been producing over lockdown. And we've got a, an actual physical exhibition coming up in August as well, which is the Association of Sussex Artists. Um, so I have some work in there, as well as helping out because I'm on the committee, so helping with all of the arrangements and back office stuff to get that running. Um, so really looking forward to that. I'll be putting some dates up on my Facebook page in due course and sharing some links. Wow. And what else has been going on? Just just keeping really, really busy. So in your yeah, October one, poems. in mm. your October one, I would like if I can get there um i would really like to come down and just spend some time looking at people's paintings and mm. write and see if i can write one or two inspired poems about the various paintings yeah that, that one's august the first one the the right. association of sussex artists that one's august yeah there was one you um, said in but, october october well was it right kingston's august. every other saturday october October, we normally have the Dorking Group of Artists exhibition, right, okay. but I haven't got any details for that one yet. But right, hopefully okay. it will this year. Right, hopefully what date in August ahead. is it? What date in August <clears throat> is it? Um, I can tell you, but I can I can also put it on my website later. So it will be starting on the fourteenth, fourteenth of August which is a Saturday. We normally have a private view, but we've just decided that with all the uncertainty and you know how the regulations may change in the meantime, that a private view is maybe a little bit, um, you know, it. We, what we don't want to do is to organize it and then have to cancel it and try to make sure everybody knows it's canceled so they don't turn up and there's nothing going on sort of thing. So we decided that, we give the private view a miss this year, so it'll start on the Saturday, and it goes on for uh, until the following Saturday. So normally it's just over the week, but it's going to be just about the week this time. So yeah, that's going to be exciting. Uh, an actual physical exhibition in a hall with lots of other artists as well, which would be lovely. Yeah, that would be um, brilliant. So yeah, things are starting to happen again. Um, I just hope things aren't going to happen too soon and that you know people will take precautions if they want to and not feel awkward about doing it you know if someone wants to wear a mask it's their right to do so and, and I hope nobody would try and put them off doing it you know oh, that's fun yeah. right there um, yes, I, I think that's um, one of the problems is that a lot of people who are who are choosing not to wear a mask are being slated at the moment um and and uh, there's a lot of bad, of bad feeling and i think people have to make their own decision um mm. about it and yeah and it's one of the things yes. i always said when we when we were first locked down was that it, it probably wouldn't be a government that decided when we came out of it it would be the public mm. um because yeah. we would get to the stage where we were fed up and we would decide 
we're not going to do this yeah. or we are going to do this um so and i think we're probably quite near quite at that stage now where mm -hmm. a lot of people are getting very fed up and and, dis, and despondent they know why they were wearing a mask and they will wear a mask if they're told to um yes. but, uh, yeah. but the you know others are going actually i've had i've done my bit you know i'm vaccinated we need to get mm. back to normal and it's yeah. very difficult to know really what stance to take so people mm. can only take what they what they see as right um, absolutely but in in london i have to say a lot of people are still wearing masks in shops yeah. and um you know on the trains and that um, yeah, so you're supposed to wear them but just on the, the normal trains people are still wearing masks quite a lot yeah. but i so, think we might go the way of china mm. where we we actually start like if we've got a cold we put a mask on and go out um and things mm -hmm. like that we wear masks on on the tube and, and on the you know on, on the major transport networks and i think mm -hmm. we could land up doing that um you know and and it's something i think yeah. we we would do quite comfortably as, as a nation um the only, as i say they're the doing china thing, as a courtesy thing yeah the only thing with that is that we also although you don't want to be spreading the viruses about we do need some exposure to different viruses to build up yeah. resistance to them as well. You know, I think Absolutely. a lot of people are getting far worse colds and things at the moment because, you know, for the last however many months, we've not been exposed to anything much like that. So I think it's hitting people harder yeah. at the moment and we've, we've just got to get that resistance built up again. So well, also no, normally yeah. that they would have had they would have had an epidemic of flu last year. but We mm. didn't have that um no, so no. that's kind of storing up waiting to come um later in the year probably yeah. um and yeah. that's quite normal that we have that we live with flu mm. you know every Absolutely. day which part part of that is covid um, yes you know it's yeah. not a strong strain but it, part of that is covid so yeah mm. i agree with you about building up um an immunity um to things i can remember sitting in on a on a lecture by a doctor who um wanted to get bits of all sorts of things so that he built up an immunity to it mm. um, yes you know yes. And, and it's I, I think there is there is that thing that how sterile an environment does sterile become um mm. and does that then if, if we're too um sterile and too careful about what we do the next pandemic will that actually make it breed yeah. quicker because it's but, got nothing yes. to kill it it's got yeah. you know it's got we put it's ourselves got a clear at risk. Mm. Yeah. we put ourselves at risk if we're if we don't get exposed to enough you know yeah. bugs and things in the meantime but um i mean anyway, i'm conscious of, of time marky mark okay so um i could carry on talking with you for ages but yes, um, so sorry. I normally try and keep it to about half an hour so yeah. people um don't get too put off um by I know if something's too long myself, I think, oh, I'll watch it later, but yeah, you just don't get around to it. I know people are so busy. So anyway, it's been an absolute great pleasure having you back on the show, Marky Mark. And thanks so much for writing another excellent poem about my painting. Love the different way that you looked at it from me. And um, as usual, I do hope that you'll be back to join me again very soon. Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah, and thank That'd you for, for keep asking me. I'm very honoured to do it. Well, I'm honoured too, so there you go. <laughs> um, but so next week, I'll be back with another fabulous poet coming to join me for more talk about poetry and painting. So I hope everyone can join me then. I'll catch up on replay if you can't. So that's next Wednesday, 7pm UK time, live here on Facebook. And um, if anyone wants to sign up to my newsletter to get details of the events that are coming up in the future, um, it just sign up on my website, www.fionahooper.com and look in the comments down below for links to Marky Mark's events and um, see if you want to take part in those as well. Listen in, whatever. So be exciting. So stay safe, everybody. Have a good week and hope to see you next Wednesday. And it's bye for now from Marky Mark and myself. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.